Hey everyone, today we're checking out the Backbone, PlayStation Edition. So the Backbone is a controller for your phone, so it clips around the, the mobile device in the middle here. Uh, now this is the PlayStation Edition, so that means it's got the triangle, circle, square and cross buttons on the side here. Uh, the normal edition just has A, B, X, Y, I believe. Um, this is the Android one, so it has a USB-C connection. There is also an iPhone version, which actually came out first, and that obviously has a lightning port and it works with iPhones. Now, what's so special about this PlayStation Edition, besides having, you know, the PlayStation buttons that mirror the, the DualSense controller uh, on the PS5 and so on? Um, the special thing about it is that it is officially licensed, uh, and it is designed to work with the PlayStation Remote Play app. Now, I believe this is the only mobile controller that works with the official PlayStation app. I tried the PlayStation Remote Play app with the Razer Kishi, uh, and unfortunately this does not work with the PlayStation app. It doesn't detect it as a controller at all, and it will force you to use the on-screen controls, which is unfortunate. Now, this device doesn't have any battery inbuilt or anything, but it does have a USB-C port, which allows pass-through charging. So when you have the phone docked, into the controller, you'll be able to charge the controller via this USB-C port. And conveniently on the left, there's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So you can plug in headphones uh, through the controller, which is excellent. Connecting the phone is very simple. They actually recommend you to put in the left side first or the left edge of the phone first, and then expand the controller and then line up the USB-C ports and then plug it in like this. Taking a quick tour around the device itself, uh, you have your two analog sticks here, you have your D-pad, uh, you have a screenshot button, which also acts as a record button, so you can record footage of your games. You have a quick shortcut button, or the three dot button down here that you can actually assign an app to in the Backbone app. You have your PlayStation buttons here, so you have the triangle, square, and circle, and X. These are very, very clicky. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear this on camera, but let's see if I can get it on the microphone. They make a very satisfying click when you tap on them. Uh, you also have a dedicated Backbone app button. So Backbone have a dedicated app that will help launch games from. There is a menu button here. So this acts as like a long press when you're on the home screen. On the top edge, we have our trigger buttons, we have L1. Again, L1, similar to the face buttons, uh, is very clicky as well. There is L2, the trigger here. These are actually analog triggers, which I was very surprised. Uh, they actually have um, different levels depending on how hard you press this trigger or how far you've pushed this trigger. Uh, similarly, on the right, we have R1, we have R2, also an analog trigger down here as well. And on the back, there's not much here. There's just the screws that hold the device together. Um, but I found a really nice touch. They hid the PlayStation logo underneath. Very nice. Looking at the edges that hold the phone in place, uh, the top edge, or the top end, is basically a straight channel. So this is, this is flat. So when I run my finger over, it's a, it's a flat surface almost. Uh, similarly on, on this side as well. Now on the bottom, this is where it's curved. So uh, your phone, uh, if it's a bit bigger, I mean, I don't think your phone will be any, any bigger than this, but keep in mind that this has room for your phone to stick out, but at the bottom here, this bottom edge, it actually curves, so you may run into some issues if your phone is like really big, for example. Uh, on the bottom here are like rubber pads, which prevent the phone from being scratched against the back of the, the device here. This is just hard plastic. Overall, the device feels very solid in the hand, it doesn't creak or anything, which is really good. The buttons are nice and clicky, uh, and I think the shape is quite comfortable. So there is an extra rounded part at the bottom here where your palm can rest, 
and I feel like you could probably play this for quite some time. Uh, if you've used the Nintendo Switch before, it feels like the Joy-Cons, but they're a bit fatter. So it's actually a little bit more comfortable because this feels in the, the inside of your palm a bit more than the Joy-Cons. Now the Joy-Cons are a bit taller, but they are a bit thinner. As soon as you plug in the controller, the Backbone app starts, uh, assuming you've installed the Backbone app, of course. Uh, and I do actually do recommend you install the app because it gives you a really nice interface for use with the, with the controller here. Uh, it really feels like you're using a, a game console. It mimics the, the PlayStation layout a little bit um, and it makes a nice clicking sound as well. And once you reach the top, there's actually haptic feedback. So as I push up, the phone is vibrating, telling me I've, I've reached the top, uh, which is, is really nice. The Backbone app actually picks up all the compatible games and apps you have installed on the phone. So I have the PlayStation app, I have uh, Diablo Immortal, I have Steam Link, um, PS Remote Play, it's the same thing as the, the PlayStation app. Uh, and that's all the games I have on the phone right now, but there are a lot of other compatible titles that you can download from the Play Store. And of course you have all your cloud gaming based uh, options here as well. Just to give you guys a reference of how big this controller can get. So this is a Pixel 7 Pro. Uh, I think this would probably be the limit of the size of phone you can fit into this controller. Uh, reason being, uh, let me unplug this first. So once I unplug this, you'll notice that th this right now is the maximum width that I can make this controller. So it's got about a centimeter on the end here where the plug goes in. Uh, anything bigger than Pixel 7 Pro won't be able to clear the USB-C port. Uh, if your phone is, you know, for example, one centimeter taller than the Pixel 7 Pro, you simply cannot plug in the device anymore because you can't stretch this controller further out any, any further out uh, and you won't be able to slot the plug in like so. So yeah, if you're thinking of getting this controller, uh, make sure your phone is not any bigger than a Pixel 7 Pro. For those who want to see a size comparison uh, of the controller with a, with a rather large phone installed, I have a Nintendo Switch. Uh, this is kind of the size that you'll see. Uh, it's basically the same width or length uh, as a Nintendo Switch. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, the Joy-Cons are much slimmer than the controls we have on the backbone here. Um, but the backbone is thicker, so they're actually a little bit more comfortable uh, than the Joy-Cons. Another really cool thing about the backbone is that it can actually work as a standalone controller for other devices. So if we go to the settings here, there is the controller setting here and play on any screen. So if you tap on this, you can choose whether this is gonna be used with Android, uh, Google Chrome, PC, Mac or iPad. So if you select one of these options and then you go and plug this controller via the USB-C cable to that device, it will actually appear as a wired controller and you'll be able to use this you know, without the phone, obviously. Uh, you can use this with an iPad, for example, um, via directly wiring it through this USB-C port, which is pretty good. Oh, I just discovered the button lights up when you first plug it in. Nice little touch. So whether or not the game you want to play is supported really comes down to the app developer. So we have Diablo Immortal. This one is actually supported uh, and will actually play with the controller. Everything works. Uh, you can use your, your spells with the uh, trigger buttons. Your primary attack is going to be circle here. Uh, your little, yeah, your, your left, L1 and L2 are all mapped to the different skills that you have. Uh, picking up stuff is just the, the X button here. So I noticed that the skills, uh, the mapping for the skills to the buttons don't actually match. So it says to press Y to use the potion, uh, but because this is the PlayStation edition, Y is actually the triangle button. Uh, and then X is actually the A button, uh, according to what's on the screen here. So there's a little bit of a learning curve, uh, but once you pick it up and you figure out which button does what, you can play Diablo no problems. So apart from playing games that are on the phone itself, uh, one of the main draws is to play games remotely. So being PlayStation branded, it actually works with the PlayStation Remote Play app, which is pretty good. I think it's the only one actually. So if we open up the Remote Play app here, and then we choose 
our PlayStation, which you have, you know, paired previously, uh, it will actually turn on the PlayStation 5 or 4, uh, assuming you've left it on standby mode. And then once it starts up, you should be able to see the game on the phone here. Now I am on my home network, so the latency is pretty good as you'll see in a moment. Okay, all right. So the PlayStation has booted up now. It's on its home screen. So if we just close that, I'm actually playing Horizon right now. So there you go, as you can see here, You probably can't tell, but the, there's basically no latency. It feels like I'm playing directly on the PlayStation. So I'll play this in front of the TV so you actually see the input delay and you'll notice that there's actually very little, if at all any. Like to my eye, I can't notice any delay at all. Now, of course, this is a single player game. Uh, if, even if there was some delay, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, but if you're playing a multiplayer competitive game, then maybe this will add some additional delay to your input and maybe it will hinder your gaming performance a tiny bit. Okay, so this is not a review about you know, the PlayStation Remote app and whether or not the latency is any good, um, but I'll do one last test. I'm on 5G at the moment uh, and let's see how the latency is or whether or not it's still playable. Uh, but again, this is not a review of the PlayStation app, but it's more of a, a review for this controller, but since we're here, we might as well test it. All right, it has started. So just double checking here, I am on 5G. Uh, so there is 5G. Uh, and we have linked the console to the game here. And there we go. We are now playing Horizon on PS5 on a phone over 5G. Uh, so yeah, it works pretty well. Uh, obviously the visual quality is lower. I feel like it's dropped the resolution a little bit, um, but the, the latency of the controls is completely playable, at least for a one player game or a single player game. All right, so let's talk about why I bought this thing. So I've been playing a lot of Zelda recently, uh, and I'm also a father to a child. So playing games is something that is getting harder and harder to do. Uh, and ever since Zelda came out, I realized that, hey, playing on a handheld, it's something that I can actually do in my spare time, right? When the baby's asleep, between naps, I can pick this up very easily and play it. Whereas my PS5 has been sitting there collecting dust. It is also by far the more expensive and superior machine. So when the Backbone came out for Android, it was a bit of a no-brainer for me to get this so that I can play my expensive PS5 that's collecting dust while uh, on the go. So yeah, for me, this makes total sense. It was a no-brainer to get this. So for you guys, it depends on your situation. So if you want something as close to a portable PS5 as you can get, this is pretty damn close. Anyway, I hope this was useful uh, and thanks for watching. Uh -huh.